Or maybe I can just combine example three and four together. Okay, because this one says, for which variables of the variables is each radical defined? Well, we can review what we just saw in question three, where we said, what does define mean? Where it's possible. And what does that mean when it's possible? What are the values of the variable that make it work? And what are the values that don't make it work? So generally, we talked about that square roots of negatives are impossible. And generally, the square root, if it's any even index, a fourth root, a sixth root, you can't take that of a negative. Any odd ones will always work. So with that review, we can look at these ones. And now the um, variables sometimes change. We don't have all x's, but that really doesn't matter. And then this question also says simplify. And in radicals, this means write as a mixed radical. So we're going to need to go back to our powers chart and think about things. But first, we'll do A where it's defined. So I'll just write out defined. Okay, We have one variable. It's the variable A. Is there any bad ones? We've got a square root, so we can't take the square root of a negative. But because A gets squared, squaring either a positive or a negative number becomes positive. So this one is always defined. So we can say that A can be any real number. Now, to simplify, we're dealing with square roots. Is there a perfect square that divides 45? What's the biggest one that divides 45? 9. 9 times 5. So are you OK that I broke up the square root of 45a squared to be 9 times 5 times a squared? Now we're going to simplify each of these separately. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 5, we cannot do. What's the square root of a squared? Close. But I will say yes. I will say yes, but close. Okay. What is the square root of 3 squared? 3. What is the square root of 5 squared? 5. So you would think, well, then the square root of a squared should be a. What's the square root of negative 7 squared? Positive 7. Do you remember when we did the first part of this unit with absolute value signs that the square root of something squared is going to be the absolute value of it? So technically, We'll write this as the absolute value of A. Textbook left it like this. Sometimes you'll see certain places want always the square root at the end. That would be fine as well. B, square root of... We have the square root of negative 27b to the 9. So where is it defined? Can't take the square root of a negative. Will it ever be negative inside? Yes. It will be negative inside if b is positive. So we can make a note to ourselves: b is positive. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good English sentence, is bad. B is positive is bad. Not, not a good English sentence. Sorry. Good. You let him watch these videos. Okay. Um, if B is positive is bad, that means where is it defined? 
when B is negative is good. <laughs> so B has to be less than or equal to zero. As far as simplifying goes, to simplify this one, Couple of things. Are you, uh, can we see something in 27? Yeah, it's going to be 9 times 3, right? That's the biggest square root. So I'm going to put the 9 here. I'm going to put the negative 3 still inside the square root. Technically, that's undefined. That's not possible, but we'll fix it up by the time we're done. Now, with the Bs, does it make sense that square root of b squared is absolute value of b? So sometimes I have students do this, okay? There's two options here. Option one is to write b squareds until you get to nine of them. Does that give you nine of them? b squared, b squared, b squared, b squared, that's eight. One more, b, nine. That's option one. And then students would say, this is three. This is negative root three. This is absolute value of b, absolute value of b, absolute value of b, absolute value of b, and then left with the square root of b. Okay, that's, and then to put it together, how many absolute values of b's do you have? Four of them. Repeated multiplication is an exponent of four. And the final answer for this one is 3, b to the 4, and we're left with a negative 3 and a b are the two things left in the square root sign. Why did I get rid of the absolute values? Because if I do b to the 4, it's going to be positive. I don't need the extra absolute value signs because it will be positive. Okay? Some students don't like writing out the b's that many times, so they would do negative 9, negative root 3, and then they would make the b to the 8 and the b. Because b to the 4 times b to the 4 is b to the 8. And you would get the same answer quicker without having to write out as much. Okay? Part C, part C we had the fourth root of 7z, okay, when is it defined? Well, it's even, so we can't have negatives. Can you see if z is negative, then the inside is negative? So keeping with our good English skills, z is negative is bad. So z has to be bigger than or equal to 0. This is already simplified because when we look at the number 7, there are no perfect fourths. The smallest perfect fourth was 2 to the 4, which is 16. So 7 is way too small to have a perfect fourth in it. And then we look at our variable. In order for the variable to have a perfect 4, you would need to have at least 4 of them. So the exponent would have to be a minimum z to the 4. So there's nothing we can simplify with the variable. So this one is already done. And our last example, we have the cube root of 24y to the 5. Cube root of 24y to the 5. When we look at defined, these are the easy ones. Because it's a cube root, cube roots always work. So when we say when it's defined, y can be anything. As far as simplifying this, is there a perfect cube that divides 24? Yes. Do we have at least three y's? Yes. So first of all, look at your powers chart. What cube divides 24? 
8. So this will be cube root of 8 times cube root of 3. That gets me my 24. Do I have more than three y's? Yes. I have three y's, and then I would have two left over. Simplifying each of these directly, cube root of 8 is 2. Leaves me with a cube root of 3. Cube root of y is y. And then I'm left with a cube root of y squared. Putting this together, I can put the 2 and the y together. And I can put the 3 y squared together. Now I'm showing all my work. As you get better at mental math, some of you will be able to go quicker to the final answer. That's OK. Just double check it in the end. Because sometimes when we do mental math too quickly, we make mistakes. So that's why I'm showing my work all the way through. And I'm like, this simplifies to this, this simplifies to this, this simplifies to this, this simplifies to this. Taking my time, showing all my steps is a good way to avoid mistakes. But taking your time, showing all your steps, is also sometimes annoying. So once you get to that point where you're like, I feel comfortable going faster, feel free to do so. Okay, circle questions 10, 11, and 14.